Lord said, Go for the instinct. Closer than a brother. And so, God, we pray for the many people today. We pray for those who are sick and shut in right now. We pray, dear God, that that you will step into those homes and hospitals and hospices and wherever they may be and place your powerful hands of healing upon them right now. God, we pray, dear God, that your healing power will restore and rejuvenate and strengthen their bodies in the name of Jesus from the top of their hands to the sole of their feet. God, we pray and continue to lift up Sister Laverne and Brother Ted and Sister Lula River God. We pray, dear God, for the many other saints that need healing today, God. All over the world, dear God, people need to touch them. They need a powerful miracle in their lives, dear God. And you're the one who provide that miracle. And so God, we thank you for the miracle right now. We thank you for the restoration right now. We thank you for the freedom and liberty to be able to maneuver and have the faculties of their limbs, dear God. God, we pray for our country today, dear God. We pray, dear God, that the government and the leaders make the right decisions, dear God. We pray, dear God, that you order their steps, dear God. God, we pray for the school systems and the parents and the teachers, dear God, as the students continue to do virtual learning. God, we pray for this country, dear God. We pray for peace, love, and unity, dear God, in the midst of things that may seem like right in this day and time, God. But God, we know that you have all power in your hand. So God, we will continue to look to you, dear God, for guidance and for blessings. We pray, dear God, that you help us learn to love one another. Help us learn to treat each other right, God. We pray for the Glenhaven family and the officers and leaders of this great church, and that you will strengthen them and guide them as they continue to lead this great church. Most important, dear God, help us to remember to praise you and look to you for everything. We thank you, God, for listening to us right now and asking our prayer. We're going to believe it and we're going to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we continue with worship today, we will have our Old Testament scripture read by Sister Natasha and our New Testament scripture read by Sister Brianna. Good morning, Glen Haven. Good morning, good morning. This morning's Old Testament scripture comes from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. So if you have your Bibles, please join us. Exodus 16, chapter, I'm sorry, Exodus 16, verses 2 through 15. The word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. 
For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you uttered against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Amen. Good morning, good neighbor. Chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Again, Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, and what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See, about, see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown tomorrow onto the fire, will He not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, "What shall we eat?" or "What shall we drink?" or "What shall we wear?" For the pagans run after these things. 
and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word of God for the people. Thanks be to God.
light and warmth, that clothing. But Jesus breaks it down and tells us, tell us to do this. But we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be given to us. With that being said, family and friends, this morning I would like to preach from the topic, You are too blessed to be stressed. You are too blessed to be stressed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for speaking to us through the music, dear God. Now speak to us through the message. God, I have some honor. Pray that the words that will come out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. God, you're my rock, you're my redeemer. In Jesus' name, I only pray. Amen. You're too blessed to be stressed. I'm reminded of a funny story about a driver. A driver was stuck in traffic on a very busy expressway. And suddenly a man knocks on the car window. The driver rolls down the window and asks, what's going on? Well, a smuggler's truck blew up on the expressway. And it caused a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Smuggler's jelly, traffic jam. In other words, if you've ever been on the expressway and stuck in traffic, traffic can cause a little bit of stress. I don't know about you, I had to come all the way from Stockbridge to Beaufort Highway to Beaufort Highway to Stockbridge for many years. And one thing about traffic in Atlanta, Georgia, it tends to get hard. And trust me, if you've driven long enough, Brother Al, in traffic, you know uh, that you tend to get sometimes frustrated in traffic. But stress can be like that. Stress can come from anywhere at any time. Stress can come from work. Stress can come from family. Stress can come from schools. Stress can come from relationships. Just about anything can be a source of anxiety in our daily life. And now that we are living in a time of uncertainty due to this coronavirus and the related restrictions and even the racial injustice the stress level is high now. And it can be really overwhelming. The dictionary defines stress as a physical and mental or emotional strain or tension. But some stress now, some stress is necessary and even can be good, such as Physical stress, physical activity, lifting weight, straining the body. This is the positive stress that most health people will tell you about. But when we talk about stress, stress usually is referred to excessive or negative mental or emotional strain on a person's mind. And when we feel with stress, it tends to do things to our bodies. And when I think about stress in the Bible, I remember in the book of Exodus 16 that the Israelites had just got free from slavery. That's stress right there. Nobody wants to be a slave to anything or anybody. And they were slaves in Egypt. But God freed them from slavery and they began one week out of the wilderness in when they got out of the wilderness, they began to grumble and complain. And when they began to grumble and complain, they began to look to the leadership. 
They want to grumble and complain about leadership. They grumble and complain about Aaron. They grumble and complain about Moses. They had just been called by God to lead them down this road, and yet still, instead of them being happy, they were free being happy that they were moving in a different direction, they began to complain. But God is a merciful God, isn't he? God is not, it's not like people. God is a merciful God. God shows mercy all the time. Even in the midst of their complaining about not, not, not having enough food, not having enough water, God let it rain down manna from heaven. And when he let it rain down manna from heaven, their complaints ceased. But God gave them a prerequisite. He said that I'm going to give you a certain time to collect this manna. And when you collect this matter, on the next day, you need to rest. You need to chill out. And sometimes we do need to rest from our stress. So many people this day and time are suffering from stress. I don't know what your stress may be. You don't know what my stress may be. But we all suffer from stress from time to time. But the ultimate solution to stress is to surrender it to God. People say, well, it's easier said than done. Well, I stop by to tell you, you're too blessed to be stressed. And when you're too blessed to be stressed, several things need to come into play then to help you to de-escalate the stressful moments. Number one, I suggest to you that if you're going to de-escalate the stress and all of the mess, Maybe you need to meditate on the word of God. The Bible is filled with incredible promises from God. And meditating on these words of assurance can help to eliminate our worry, our doubt, our fear, and our stress. There are few stress relievers in the Bible. Second Peter 1 and 3 said, His divine power has given us Everything we need for life and through godly knowledge of him. You get godly knowledge from reading the word, which de-escalates the stress. Jesus said in Matthew 11, he said that, Come unto me, all of you who are heavy laden and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In other words, when you meditate on the word of God, Things begin to change in your mind. The chemical imbalance begins to change in your mind. You begin to have rest from all of your stress. When you meditate on the word of God, you know that everything will be all right. And the word of God takes your mind off of all of your problems. If you don't believe it, try it for yourself. But you got to read the word not just for information, but for transformation. You can know the Bible from cover to cover, but if the Bible is not changing your heart, you still got a lot of stress and a lot of mess in you. We need to meditate and rest on the word of God. I remember, I remember, Brent, that a time when I was in college, uh -huh. getting ready to uh, get my degree at an older age, and I was in this math class, Brother Steve, it's called Math 128, and a huge math class, and I was, took my class out of St. Leo University, and that's, that's one of my pastor friends told me to go there, and in this class, there was so much math, I forgot about all the algebra, geometry parts, and the things about math, and as I matriculated through this math class, I began to become overwhelmed, I began to get stressed. And one day we had our final exam, and I went home, family and friends, and when I went home, I began to study. And I studied very hard, but in studying very hard, as I began to lay my head down to bed, I could feel my anxiety rising because I know I was getting ready to take this test. But as I laid down, I got up out of my bed, and when I got up out of my bed, I began to get on my knees, and I remember the scriptures 
from the Bible, such as, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I remember those verses, and when I got into class, and when the enemy tried to tell me I can't, God told me that I could through his scriptures, and I can remember that I can do all things. And at the end of the semester, while all of those had, when the other students had, they were sure that they knew they had passed that class. Most of them didn't pass that class, and I felt that I wasn't going to pass that class, but God gave me a B minus that class. That how I was able to finish at Leo University. When you meditate on God's word, you become, you get rest from your stress. Not only you need to meditate on God's word, but the thing about it, to add to that, we need to keep putting one step in front of the other. Stress tends to hold us back. Stress tends to hold us back from making any progress that God wants us to have. As a matter of fact, in Luke 13, um, the woman who was stricken with the condition, she was in a sinking condition. She was bent over for many, many years. And every day, she kept going to Jesus and looking for healing. And Jesus one day saw this woman and she touched the hem of his garment and she began to straighten up from her stricken condition. And every day, what we need to do is to choose to take one step in front of the other and do not let the stress keep us from being the best that God wants us to be. But sometimes, we can't always avoid stressful conditions. God never promised us a rose God. He never promised us a rose God. But he promised us that he will promise to be with us every step of the way. He told Joshua that I will be with you every step of the way. Just keep moving forward to the land of promise. But we need to continue to move forward and make progress, even in the midst of our stress, even in the midst of our mess. We need to stay focused on the plan that God as for us. And not only that, not only that we need to meditate on God's word that we need to keep moving forward. You need to know who you are. Jesus said, I know who I am. He said, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. As a matter of fact, in Bible study, one of the principles that we're studying that's led by Brother Al in Zoom Bible study. One of the principles is do you know who you are? A lot of stress in life results from not knowing who you are. People tend to hide behind masks, people tend to live double lives, people live to try to live unrealistic lives. And when you do this, what you're doing is keeping yourself out of balance because you don't know if you're on the right side, you don't know if you're on the left side. But we need to know who we are. And yes, may, we may be a husband, we may be a wife, we may be a son, we may be a daughter, we may be a father, we may be a mother, we may be a co-worker, whatever you think you may be. But do you know yourself? I stop by to tell you, you know who you are? You are a child of God. You are a king's king. You weren't born just by accident. God born, you were born for a specific time in place. And you are, you are too blessed to be stressed. As a matter of fact, the disciples and they were upset and stressed when they thought Jesus had died and was risen. As a matter of fact, down with Thomas in John chapter 20, along with the other disciples, he was hiding behind closed doors for fear of the leaders who were going to come and kill them. But isn't that how like some of us are sometimes? We become doubting Christians. We, sometimes we doubt about this and we doubt about that. 
But what we have, Thomas did not have. We have the New Testament to give us hope. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to give us promise. I'm reminded of the scripture. Jesus said to Thomas and the disciple, Jesus said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I stopped by to tell you, my brother and sister, all you do, all you have to do is believe. You're too blessed to be stressed. I can run the road for you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There was in the fiery third furnace, and they could have been stressed out, but they were blessed by God. Daniel, who was in the lion's den, he could have been eaten up by the lion, but he was blessed through the protection of God. David, who could have been killed by the lion, but he was blessed by the anointing of God. God, the God who led the Israelites out of Egypt and parted the Red Sea and provided manna, is the same God who can provide anything for you. You just got to believe it in order to receive it. My brothers and sisters, no matter the type of stress in your life, the starting point for dealing with stress is Jesus Christ. Jesus offers us great encouragement from John 14 and 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. We desperately need to believe in Jesus Christ. We need him because even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of injustice and all the craziness going on, we need something to decompress us and de-escalate the stress. The problem is sometimes we tend to adopt to certain things. We have certain habits, we have certain vices, we have certain things that we think that can relieve us from our stress. But nothing can relieve us from our stress but the blessings of God. I don't know about you today. But I'm a firm believer that I'm too blessed to be stressed. No matter what's coming to my life, I know that God is on my side. I know that God is willing to walk with me every step of the way. And like he told Joshua, no matter where you go, I will always be there with you. But we got to find rest from our strengths. Finally, we need to seek peace daily. By filling our minds always through prayer. Somebody told me when you continue to pray, prayer changes things. Now I don't know about you, I might think, but I, I would say this: you keep on pushing, pray until something happens. But I do know this, brother Darren. If I pray long enough, that thing might not change right off the bat as I want it to. But guess what prayer can do? It will change the way I think about that. So I thank God for prayer. And sometimes we need to continue to pray and press on. And we continue to pray and press on that we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding. My brothers and sisters at home, wherever you may be, you're too blessed to be stressed. You have the benefits and the promises of the blessings of God every day of your life. Continue to stay focused. Continue to meditate on God's word. Continue to put one foot in front of the other. And I truly believe that every day will be all right. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for reminding us, dear God, that no matter the anxiety that we have, no matter what comes, that you're always there with us. God, we thank you that we know who we are. We are a child of yours. And we know that you will always be there with us, even in the midst of our stress and our mess. And God, continue to bless everyone as they continue to move forward. 
in this time of uncertainty. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The invitation to discipleship is before you this morning. You have an opportunity to be saved. All you have to do is repeat these words after me. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Come into my heart and to my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Family and friends, if you say those words, you are now in good company. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you are blessed. So don't worry about the next. I would like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in on our live stream today. You could have went anywhere else, but thank you for worshiping with us. I thank God for our music ministry. I thank God for our media ministry. And I thank God for you. Continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. May God bless you and may God keep you. May you go in peace and may you go in love. Amen. One thing I tend to admit from sometimes is I'm just so happy that you continue to choose to tune in on our Men Haven live stream. But we still have to do ministry here. And we solicit and ask that you continue to contribute to the ministries of Lynn Haven. We still have to keep the lights on and have to continue to keep the media ministry going. So we thank you for what you do with give, but if you have the opportunity to give, please consider giving blessings and contributing to Glen Haven through mailing to our church or giving through PayPal. Thank you again for what you do for Glen Haven. God bless you.